Awesome, awesome, awesome. Oh, hi there, everybody. Okay, we have next week a separation happening. I mean, right, right? Mm. He's, he's, okay. He's, he's, he's so excited. Stay down. Stay, okay. He's doing good. Okay, so we have two options for you next Saturday at 2 p.m. downstairs for those that are a little bit worried about COVID. Okay, that doesn't apply to you guys. Okay, if you're 60 and over, you can come to that one. It's going to be a smaller gathering. We only have about 10 people right now. You have to sign up for that so we know because it is a limited one. Bring finger foods. Join us there. But then, that's right. Uh, we're, you're coming to both, right? He's coming to both. Okay, so that's good. You fit in both categories. Okay, okay. so, you know. Um, so then Sunday, Sunday at 4, at 4 o'clock, is going to be a big, huge potluck out at the camp. And we have other surprises in store that out at Alaska Christian Retreat. We still need you to sign up. We need to get an idea of what's going on with the menu so we know it. Because, you know, he loves to eat. And he's going to eat a little bit of everything, we promise, right? <laughs> Almost a little bit of everything. But another thing to keep in mind, so please sign up for that. That's at 4 o'clock next week. But another thing I need you to really hear is that next week we are doing a special thing. Next Sunday, wear your Destiny Conference t-shirts. Any of them that you want, we're going to have a casual, fun day. It's t-shirt day. So um, if you don't have one, See, Pastor, he's got about 100 or something like that. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I got I, I, I want to tell you, I, I am so grateful. Pastor Andy's here, and he and Beth ordained by God, I believe, with all my heart. They, they, he brought them here. And I want to just encourage you. You know, as a pastor, Andy, he's going to be in a, in some situations, in what I call a no-win situation. My daddy used to say, D if you do and D if you don't. And he gets up here and talks about money, somebody's going to get mad. Because they'll be begging for money, all that preacher talks about is money. And then other people, like I've done it, it's happened to me many times, I had a man, several people over the years have come to me and said, Pastor, thank you for teaching about giving on Sunday morning. It really helps. I, I didn't know some of these things. I'm really glad. And, and then a, a week, two weeks later, I had a guy leave the church. I got mad because all I talk about is money. They're never coming back. You know, you can't please everybody. You just can't do it. So we got to do what, what we can do. Like I said, I think I said last week, but if he's talking about money, he's teaching, he's trying to share with you, not begging for your money. You ain't going to give what you don't want to give. Just hang on to your money. God don't need your money. You don't need my money. But we need God's blessings. And that's the way it works. Um, Miriam shared a little story, and I want to hurry because i got to introduce our guest today. But I'm going to hurry real quick. I want to tell you, she told me this story this morning about a guy who was down his luck. He'd failed in every business he'd started, and he was homeless. He was in a park, and he was living in, 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 a, in a homeless shelter, and he was in this park. And an old man was at the park. And saw, the old man saw him. He said, what's going on, son? He told him his story. He failed and failed. So the old man said, here, he pulled out his checkbook, wrote him a check for a million dollars, gave it to him. He said, here, I want to give you this to help you get back on your feet. And said, I'm going to meet you here in this park a year from today, and you'll pay me back. And he said, he was, said his last name was Rockefeller. And he wrote him a million-dollar check. He gave him the check. And the man said, I can't pay you back. He said, you'll be able to pay me back, I promise. I'll meet you here one year from today. The guy took the check. He went home. He put it in his drawer. He said, I can't cash that check. I just can't do it. I just, I, I just, but a million dollars. Wow. What did he see in me? So the guy got courage to try again. Got up off his feet and started a business. So went back at it and did great and really was successful. That whole next year he was doing awesome. He went back to the park to meet the man. He took the check with him to give it back to the man. And he didn't. And this lady came pushing an old man in a chair. 
and the old man had gotten in a wheelchair. He was crippled now. And, and uh, the guy told the lady and the man the story. And the lady laughed and said, this guy's got Alzheimer's. He ain't got no million dollars. That check ain't worth a dime. <laughs> so I'm going to give you all a million dollars today. And I'll come back a year from now and collect it, all right? So don't you worry about that. It is an honor to to be uh, here and to be able to pass the torch today. I'm very excited. We have with us our administrative bishop. Uh, this kind of, I laugh about it. We used to call them state overseers and superintendents and all different names. He's now our uh, administrative bishop. Our administrative bishop, that's the new title, right? And if he goes down to McDonald's and eats lunch, he'll be an archbishop. So he's going to come and He's going to come and, uh, and join and share with us. He's from Tennessee by way of North Carolina, for, by way of Tennessee, and we're glad to have him and his bride with us today, Dr. Jeffrey McGirt. He's coming. All right. Well, praise the Lord. Good to see you here this morning. How many are happy in Jesus? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So, uh, I need to uh, do a couple of things real quick, and then I'm going to be very brief in my remarks, but I want you to help me celebrate this pastoral couple right here. Uh, Alan and, and Miriam have been, uh, come this April would have been 34 years serving in this local church. Amen. Now, a couple of you hadn't quite been around 34 years. Some have been a little more than 34 years. That's beside the point. Alan, Miriam, thank you for your contribution to the kingdom of God in such a time as this. Thank you for all of the transitions that you worked through through the years. Thank you for your continued support, dedication, commitment, and all of the things that you're going to be doing on social media. Uh, thank you for continuing to be the district overseer for just a little while. Thank you for continuing to serve on the state council. Some of you don't have a clue what that is. It really doesn't matter. You know, some people like to be on the state council. Woohoo, big deal, whatever. Uh, been there, done that. Thank you for continuing to avail yourself to the church of God and, and your level of expertise and your knowledge, not only in you, because he wouldn't be anything if it wasn't for her. <laughs> Amen. So, <laughs> Miriam, thank you, uh, Miriam, for your continued support, for being the helpmeet, for being uh, uh, the, the better part, all right, for all that you have done for this church and for this community to both of you, for not only for the South Atna community, but for the uh, state of Alaska at large. Uh, that we are falling in love with. On the way over here yesterday, I saw more snow in 30 minutes than I have in 55 years. <laughs> My praise God, hallelujah, and just make it back across this afternoon would be okay. If not, I'll come back. Uh, anyway, thank you. Thank you so much for your continued labor of love for the kingdom of God. I want both of you, if you would, to join my wife and I on the stage uh, we have a little something that we want to give to you. And in doing so, uh, I want to ask all of you in a moment to just stand and just express your appreciation for this wonderful couple, for this wonderful team that God has given to you in this local church. Alan, I've got a... Well, there it is. I almost lost it. Uh, just a... Just a small token of appreciation from the state of Alaska, from the state council, and uh, from my heart to you to say thank you. Thank you not only for your friendship, but for all that you've done, but for what you mean to so many. You are appreciated today. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Thank you so much. My wife Barbara has something for Miriam.
<laughs> Amen. So would you stand and let's give them a hand of appreciation. Thank you both. Uh, Pastor Allen is going to come back in just a moment. Uh, I just want to share an illustration with you to help me segue uh, into something that I'm going to share for you for, in the scripture in 2 Timothy in just a moment. Uh, you, if you haven't been to our nation's capital in Washington, D.C., uh, we've been there a couple of times. Our son actually lives there uh, only because of grad school, and there was only two schools in the nation that offered a degree that he's looking for. So he lives there right now. God bless his soul. Uh, and I'll, I'll let that go. But in our nation's capital, just outside of D.C., is a little place called Arlington, Virginia. At this place called Arlington, there's a tomb there. And there's an inscription that is on that tomb about the unknown soldier that is housed or buried in that tomb. Outside of the tomb and all the marble and all the beautiful facade there, there's some soldiers that have committed. They've given their life to guard that tomb. Every day, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, 365 leap years, 66 days a year, every single day. They're on shift for two hours to start with before somebody else comes in and rotates they do it with precision they're extremely precise in every movement and the changing of the guard takes roughly about 10 minutes 10 and a half minutes and you can google it and watch it it's really fascinating at just some of the things they do and the gun that they use and the bayonet on the end of the gun and they check that they check the action they check the lever uh, they check the stock of the gun to make sure that everything is working in perfection. They use white gloves while they're doing this just to look at the gloves, and they do that just to make sure that, you know, everything is clean. Everything is working flawless and seamlessly. In a moment, I want to talk to you about the changing of the guard that uh, we did earlier this morning, and we're just kind of repeating now and doing it again, but we felt that it was important to share that with you. So, uh, how many of you are willing, beyond any doubt, to say, you know what, we've had wonderful, a wonderful pastoral couple in the Humphreys, and you have. We have records to prove it. You're here. Look at all of this. Look at all of you. But are willing to say, you know what, today we're changing the guard. And there's a family sitting over there. And they are very capable. They already are here. They already are working with you with precision. They're already in the regiment. They're just over waiting for the baton to be tossed or handed over to them. And they're just going to keep running the race. And you're going to keep running with them. How many of you, real quickly, would stand to your feet and extend appreciation to the Terrys, Andy and Beth Terry and their family, and say, you know what? You're our pastor now, and we're going to work with you guys, and we're going to do all for the glory of God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. While Pastor Allen is coming, I've already uh, signed an official document for Andy and Beth Terry. He has that in his possession that that pastoral appointment becomes effective at 12.01 tonight, anytime tomorrow. Uh, so, Andy, congratulations. Pastor Allen has a presentation that he wants to give uh, to your new pastor.
Amen. Thank you so very much. Thank you, uh, Pastor, for, for sharing that with us. Uh, just seriously, just only a few minutes, uh, they'll put the text on the screen, 2 Timothy uh, chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. If you'll turn your attention to that, I solemnly urge you in the presence of God in Christ Jesus, who will someday judge, next part of that screen, the living and the dead, when he appears to set up his kingdom. Verse number two, preach the word. This is applicable to all of us. Be prepared whether the time is favorable or not. Patiently correct. Well, it's hard to do, isn't it? You know, you, you ever get people, you just want to grab them by the neck? I already told you what to do. Y'all don't ever have that problem, do you? Patiently correct. Rebuke and encourage your people with good teaching. For the time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. They'll follow their own desires and will look for teachers who will tell them whatever their lying ears want to hear. They will reject the truth and chase after myths. In the next verse. But you should keep a clear mind in every situation. Don't be afraid of suffering for the Lord. Work at telling others the good news and fully carry out the ministry God has given unto you. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his word. I mentioned a moment ago about this whole changing of the guard. And how it is done with precision and it is so consistent. It's unwavering. The tomb is never, ever unguarded. I believe I can say this morning with all assurance that this pastoral couple will always have your best interest at heart. That they will guard the flock. That they will literally help watch over you. Not only that, but everything in between because of the responsibility and the burden that they not only feel now, but that will be greater and greater in the days to come. So there are three things real quickly I want to just point you to so we can think about it. Number one, that text said, preach the word. In other words, just simply love people into the kingdom of God. Be steadfast in our faith, and we should never try to do this alone. Amen. The changing of the guard, there's not one guard. There are a whole lot of guards. They are so committed to doing that, that as regular, everyday people, they commit to not even drink alcohol because of their dedication to what it is that they're going to be doing. Not only that, they offer themselves up for service literally to somebody that they don't even know. As a matter of fact, it's an unknown tomb, so nobody 
really knows. Do you realize that this couple, in preaching the word, is giving themselves totally to you? Even though you may feel unknown and nobody really knows you, but God knows you. He knows our down-sitting and our uprising because God is great. Man, I like that. God is great. He knows everything about us. They may not know everything about you, but God does, and that's the thing that is most important. So when we preach the Word, not only, Pastor Andy, are you going to be preaching the Word, but all of these people here and those that were in the early service are going to be preaching the Word. You say, now wait a minute, now wait a minute, I, I, I'm not a preacher. Yeah, yeah. And when necessary, you can use words. You can preach and not say a single word. Now, if I got to do that, I'm in trouble because I, you know, tie my hands, I might be quiet. When necessary, use words. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort, as the King James says, with all long suffering. Be patient, be kind, love one another. That's why we are here. That's why we preach the word. That's why we do what it is we do so that others can come to know the same God that loves us. Every day, every single day, when I pray, I say, Lord, I love you with all of my heart, and I know you love me. You ought to try it. God loves you with an everlasting love. I'm convinced that if God had a refrigerator, you don't need one in Alaska, but if God had a refrigerator, he'd have our picture on it. I just choose to believe. He loves us just that much. So in this changing of the guard, keep the love flowing. Keep the love working. Keep doing what you're doing so that God can get the glory so that others can feel and see and experience the love that is on the inside of us. Secondly, look at this. Not only preach the word, but live the word. Y'all act like you like one another. I like it. I hope it's, you know, I know it's not a show. But live the word. How, how are you going to do that? Well, you're going to care for one another. They're going to provide oversight, but you're going to care for one another. Uh, not only that, you're going to feed the flock. You're going to give them the scripture. You're going to give them the word of God. Why? So we can hide God's word in our heart that we might not sin against him. Again, back to the changing of the guard. They have a manuscript that they follow. They have rules. They have guidelines. We have the same thing. It's called a Bible. B-I-B-L-E. Basic instructions before leaving earth. The Bible. You know, uh, Prego, the commercial. You know, it's in there. <laughs> it's in there. Love one another. Preach the word. Live the word. Every single day of our life, as we go through this, we lead the flock so that we could show them God with skin on. I've never seen God. I've never seen Jesus. I have felt impressed. I have felt the urge of the pull. I've never heard the audible voice of God. People say, well, God spoke to me. Well, that's wonderful. Praise God. That's great. I, I'd like for him to speak to me. I don't know how I'd respond. I'd probably go, uh, hello. I'd probably be scared out of my wits. Yeah. Love God. Love one another. That is an example of the church. And then finally, just reach the world. I started an illustration this morning, and I've got a bad habit about that, of starting something and not finish. I'm going to do better this time. We pastored for 25 years, 51 weeks, full-time, part-time, 
in one church. And we always wanted to do everything we could for our children. They, that, that's the only church they ever knew. They grew up in that church. They had a basement like this. They played hide-and-go-seek in that church. They just did all kinds of stuff. In doing so, uh, we, throughout our life, did our best to lead them in the right direction so that they would love God. When we resigned from the pastorate and started working for Lee University, we made a commitment together, my wife and I, to our son and said, uh, Sam, I, we're leaving the church. I'm going to change jobs. I commuted to work 1,100 miles every week for almost 19 months. That's tough. The point is, we wanted him to stay in the high school with all of his friends. More than that, we wanted to show him that we cared about him. Not only our son, but our daughter. She was off at Lee in grad school, so didn't apply to her too much. Why are you saying that? I'm saying that to say... Whatever you do as a church body, whatever you do as a pastor, don't ever neglect your family. Listen to me. Your number one responsibility is your relationship to God. Nobody can make you do anything. Well, we're going to do two things. Especially if you live in North Carolina, you're going to pay taxes. And one day we're going to meet God. But after that, you know, all bets are off. Your number one responsibility is to love God. And then right after that is your family. They are the most important people that you have. You know that old guy in the Bible, Noah, built that big old boat called an ark? How many people were on the ark? Somebody tell me. Eight. There was Noah, Mrs. Noah, that's her name, the Bible doesn't say, so I'm preaching. I call her Mrs. Noah. When you're preaching, you call her what you want to. <laughs> their three sons and their wives, eight people. Nobody else was saved. Noah preached for how long? 100 years in building the ark, preaching, doing all the stuff that he was doing, and he didn't win anybody. But he saved his family. As a pastor... You can't save them. You can't give them salvation, but you can lead them to Jesus. As a church body, that's something good for all of us to watch over our family that God has given to us. In that love, you're going to look out for one another. In that changing of the guard, it's going to be seamless. One soldier is not trying to outdo the other soldier. They're in it together. They're in harmony. They're in unison. They're in track one with another and the goal is is to protect the tomb of the unknown it's not about the soldier it's about the responsibility that soldier has at the end of the day it's not about the sound out in the church of god it's not even about me it's about god you're exactly right it's all about him and when we love one another and when we love our family the way that God intended, you know what happens? This crazy thing happens and people go, huh, what are they doing over there? What, what's going on over there? You know, I, I, I tried to hurt so-and-so and they ended up doing something good for me. And I tried to do this and this love just keeps, what are y'all doing? It's about God. Don't ever sacrifice your family. Don't ever sacrifice your prayer life. Make it a priority. And then don't ever sacrifice yourself. You've got to be balanced in what you do. I mean, I, I, I love outdoors. I love to go camping. I hadn't been camping in Alaska just yet. Working up nerve. No, I, I'd do it in a skinny second. I, I, I love to hunt. I love to fish. I'd love to eat what I kill. There you go. That's right. Any, any of y'all want to take me moose hunting? Hang on. 
I'm, I'm available. <laughs> I'll give you my number. Here's my point. No matter the things that we love that God allows us to do, don't ever let it supersede your love for God, your love for one another, your love for family. The guard has been changed today. You have a new pastor. Yeah. You have a brand new pastoral family. But that simply means that you just keep doing what you've been doing, just doing more of it. Just do a greater job for the kingdom of God. I saw one of the most beautiful sights that I've seen since I've been in Alaska today. In this altar, do more of it. You say, well, I don't need God. Well, I beg to differ. Well, I, I don't need all that. Well, you might not act like Pastor Allen. You might not act like me or Andy. But act like something because God is so amazing, awesome, and wonderful. Amen. And just like the changing of the guard, what God does, I don't understand, takes a heart that is black with sin, washes it in red blood, and makes it as white as snow. Blows this little old North Carolina country boy's mind. I don't get it, but it makes me feel good. I don't understand it, but it puts something in my heart. I can't see it, but it sure feels wonderful. So in the changing of the guard, in the passing of the baton, in all that you're doing, Keep doing it for the glory of Almighty God. I want the Terry family to come. Come on out of the sound booth there, buddy. I want you to stand with me and offer a prayer for this family. Not just today, but every day. They need your prayers. They need our prayers. I want you to lift them up in the Lord. I want you to say, you know what? I'm going to be a better member. What if everybody in the church was just like you? Everybody was just like you. What kind of church would you have? <laughs> If they were all like me, I'd be messed up too, buddy. <laughs> Amen. Hey, I, I love it. I got We're going to have transparency. I want to be like Jesus. I want to be like him. The more I read his word, the more his word reads my life, the more that transformation can take place. So in the coming days, weeks, months, and years, let God transform us all. Romans 12, 1, 2 is beautiful. Beautiful illustration about the transformation that God can do in us. So let's let him do it in our heart and in our life. And in praying that, let's pray for this family. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your love, for all that you've done for us. We thank you for the Terry family. God, for bringing them to this church for bringing them when you did, for helping them to acclimate, for helping them to feel a part of the body of Christ. We pray a special anointing over their heart and their life. Use them for your glory and your honor. I pray, God, for the Humphreys. Lord, that you'd help them to have a wonderful transition in the things that they can do and rest in relaxation in whatever area of ministry you continue to work through them. Lord, we give you the praise and the glory and the honor for it all. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for letting us be here today. God bless you. We love you. We appreciate you. Thank you for what you're doing for the kingdom of God. Amen. 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 God bless you. You're dismissed. Thank you so much.